Dimp Digital presents Idle Game Chat. Cool. Persona Free Reload. Step into the shoes of a transfer student thrust into an unexpected fate when entering the hour hidden between one day and the next. Awaken an incredible power and chase the mysteries of the dark hour. Fight with your, or fight for your friends and leave a mark on their memories forever. Persona 3 Reload is a captivating reimagining of the genre-defining RPG reborn for the modern era. Key features include experience the pivotal game of the Persona series, faithfully remade with cutting edge graphics, modernized quality of life features, and signature stylish UI. Fully immerse yourself in an emotional, gripping journey with new scenes, character interactions, and additional voiceover. Choose how to meaningfully spend each day through various activities from exploring the poor island to forging genuine bonds with beloved characters. Build and command your optimal team to take down otherworldly shadows and climb closer to the truth. So we're back with more Persona. And uh, yeah, I'll, let, I'll hand over to you. But I mean, it's been a while, so you may have questions not even relating to Persona 3 and just get a, get your sea legs under to understand where we are in the series, maybe. Well, yeah, it's been a while. Probably been a mm. good... Looks like it's been a good couple of months since we've done one of these. Um, well, like, yeah, a like podcast in general, yeah. Yeah, like or a podcast in general, but even more specifically, I literally said to you before we press the record button, like what are we doing what are we doing with this? Where are where are we at in the fucking meta of what would they call it? Or not the meta, but in the in the world of Persona. Because I feel like yeah. all I've spoken to you not all I've spoken to you about, but the big games that you've played or feel like you've played of late, probably in the last like six to twelve months, maybe have been Persona. Like mm. you've been really enjoying it, um, but I've fucking lost as to what's going okay. on here. I mean, that introduction helps because I assume that this was based on my limited gaming knowledge and my understanding of what's out there and what's not and what I see coming onto Game Pass. This is basically a reimagined version of the original Persona Three that come out moons yeah. ago right and because of that i'm pretty I'm, i'll let you confirm but i feel like you did play persona 3 or mm. was that nonsense no interest so i've played persona 4 golden yeah which i think was a re-release of a 2008 version let me just double check that i think it came out in 2012 yeah 2008 persona 4 came out um, and then Golden came out a couple of years or maybe maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, it's 2012. So I played that version on Game Pass last year on that on that Series X. Mm. And that was my first Persona game. Um, there was a point where I was thinking, because on, on Game Pass they did, or maybe they still do, they had Persona 3 Portable, which yeah. was a portable version of Persona 3. Now, Persona 3 originally came out in 2006, um, and then I think they released like a another enhanced version in a bit later on called Persona 3 Fez, which created a you know a bit of an epilogue and more options. Then Persona 3 Portable came out, but it was made for portable, so <clears throat> it was um, I think it was for the PlayStation Portable, in fact. So it's that it wasn't even the Vita, and therefore it was more of a visual novel style. So you didn't really run around the school or run around the town interacting with people. You sort of have a map menu and you could just choose who to interact with and then it would bring up that conversation. Um, whereas Persona in in more modern times is you're running around in 3D spaces talking to people and exploring uh, and whatnot. Um, and basically I was thinking, should I start a Persona 3? Because that's the, the, the first available one. But having done a little bit of research, one, I got wind that there's a remake possibly or reimagining, whatever you want to call it, it's a remake, uh, in, in development, so hold your horses. Two, there's no story linkage between the Persona games. They are separate entries. They're much like Final Fantasy, 
So when you see Final Fantasy 16, you don't have to be playing the other 15 to understand what's going on. They're separate stories. There are little Easter eggs, I've noticed. You know, there was a reference in Persona 5 to Persona 4, and there probably was a reference to Persona 3, but I didn't pick up on it. But they're very minor. They're just sort of like things there for the fans. So at that point, I was like, if there is a, if this, if this is true, there's a remake inbound, then it makes no sense to do this. There's no law or continuity I need to follow. Then it was the decision between Persona 4 and Persona 5. Persona 5, much more modern. Persona 4, 2008 game when it first came out, so a long, long time ago. And in the end, I went through Persona 4, sort of battled through it, really enjoyed it on the whole, but I had issues with the way in which the sort of story and some of the decisions you make kind of unfold or don't unfold depending on what dialogue choices you, you end up making. And it felt old as well. It felt very old. Like, I managed to get over that, but it definitely was... I was like, yeah, this is... You can tell this is from years ago at this stage, over a decade ago. And then we got to Persona 5 Royal, which was also on Game Pass, and we went through that. And that's like the... the mo- that Up until then, that was the most modern entry and really enjoyed that. I was like... Yeah, that was. I was like, okay, this is this is what can happen, and then we got wind that Persona Three was going to get remade, called Persona Three Reload, and I was like, yeah, that's all worked out nicely because now I can go back to free. Then I'm kind of up straight with Atlas's JRPGs in this space, and we've got Metaphor. I think it's called Refantasmio or whatever it is coming. You've got that in your fantasy gaming league. Yeah, that's in a matter of weeks. And I can sort of just dive into that if I wish to on release and then sort of be up to date. Next time they do a new entry, I'll be like, okay, we're going to clear the schedule and perhaps make some time for it unless something like GTA 6 or Red Dead 3 or Last of Us. There's certain games where it'll get bumped, but it's that, these games are now at the top of the list providing the quality is still there. So mm. that's the whistle-stop tour of Persona and what I've been up to. And the only reason I didn't get to Persona 3 earlier was because I think it was very close to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming out. And that bumped Persona 3 Reload out until later on. It was a Game Pass game anyway. I knew I had about a year to get through it, so it weren't going to be an issue. So that's where we are. I probably will be directly comparing it to 4 and 5, just because they're good sort of points. So what's good about those, where it improves, where it doesn't improve... And I don't have any experience with the original. So those looking for, oh, what have they changed in this remake? Forget about it. All I know is it used to be fucking really hard, Persona 3, and you couldn't control your party's actions up until Portable. So the first entry of it, you couldn't do that. Um, I think it may be in the Fez, the Enhanced Edition, they enabled that. But the very first version of this, the party members did what they wanted, which I can just see being infuriating. You're like, right, I need heals here. Nope, you've yeah. just used your wind ability on a, an enemy that's null to it, so that's completely wasted that turn. Whoever thought that was a good idea back in the day to let them characters do what they want? It's just like, easier, probably, you assume. Probably, it's just yeah. like, ah, Well, just... no, if you then got to program the AI to be semi-intelligent, but they, you know, I don't know. RNG. Yeah. Some people might be wondering, well, you're not talking about Persona 1 and 2, but... I don't think they're even in a playable state on modern platforms and they are very, very old. They kind of just, if you, if you track like the history of Persona, Persona 3 was the one where they added like the social links and the, that type of thing, or at least that's where it became popularized. So this is kind of like the first, first draft of what became Persona 4 and then ultimately became Persona 5 and they were quite a bit different. So 1 and 2, there's rumours circulating they may get remade with a modern lens, which I'd be interested in doing. And again, the stories aren't connected, but if they can sort of import the flavour of 3, 4 and 5 into the other two, that's a that's a nice little cash cow for them, I think, because I think a lot of people would be willing to go back just to see what, what stories they're coming up with. A lot of games get fucking kicked, didn't they, for doing this sort of stuff? Like going back and, but I find it interesting. There's some games where everyone just laps it up, like with no questions asked, almost. And yeah, like what they've done, like the Red Dead piece where they did that, and like, everyone's going, "Yep, yeah, give me that." Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes, so I just find it interesting where some people get a free pass. It feels like, and everyone's like, "Yep, yeah, do that." Yeah. Um, and sometimes you feel like studios get kicked for for going back over old ground. But I suppose with the way that Persona has developed as a as a game, people want to play the older stuff, but with the newer 
lens yeah. and mechanics and more modernized stuff on it because it's not something that comes out like fucking yearly or whatever like you've referenced the games are like four or five years apart or more in some cases like so yeah a lot happens but it's interesting that you're like give me that i'll go back and do it even though they're separate games yeah it's just it's just an excuse to kind of get filled in i guess because you hear a lot mm. of hype everyone's got their favorite out of three four and five and um some people like three some people like four some people like five and they've all got their own perks and, and drawbacks they're very similar in you know once you get in there and understand how the games work, you can see the design is 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 quite mm. similar when it comes to like social links. But they do have a distinct sort of tone or theme, I guess, behind them. Like the Persona Three is actually quite sad in many ways, and whereas something like Persona Four Golden is more about, I don't know if you remember, you're like you're trying to discover this person who keeps kidnapping people. So it's more of a mystery. Mm. It's like finding the truth. Um, and then Persona 5's like injustice and fighting up against that. So, but this is much more dour, I'd say, in, in tone. It's, you know, everyone's seemingly had some sort of trauma that they're going through, experienced loss in, in some way. And that's kind of what tends to mm. seemingly bind all these characters together in some way. So it kind of explores that part. So it's not a, I wouldn't say uplifting would be the term to kind of describe this. So but it's what I say about games. Like if you want to just, enjoy your game just go and play Astro Bot or something like you just sit down and be be happy but I don't know like I say you're not sitting there smiling at Schindler's List laughing your way to the bank and this is this is brilliant mm. you're sort of just experiencing this awful story it's just interesting to sometimes explore those themes well yeah I mean I think enjoyment isn't just about smelling the roses or whatever it is like and and things just being all happy clappy like there is um, enjoyment in a way it sounds a bit like <laughs> sadistic but like experiencing someone else's sad story or yeah. working through that and understanding why they are the way they are or why certain things have turned out to be that way look at Bruce Wayne wouldn't have been who he was if he didn't lose his parents maybe so no. there you go that's that's the origins. ultimate trauma that's the ultimate trauma yeah but interesting so help that you're a billionaire though afterwards really does help when you ain't got to worry about working for a living after all that i'll, I'll tell you that for bruce he's <laughs> he's lucked out there that does help i don't care well, what you it, say it, he's had feet up and having a butler yeah. but just have a good old alfred just roaring around yeah. no problems at all looking after him is is a real help as well so he had a couple of leg ups but yeah. um yeah, I know what you mean. It is. It, it, it's interesting as well that this is. I would have all, always assumed that these were like continuous stories. Like I find mm. it interesting that, and maybe it's just a symptom. Like you referenced, like Final Fantasy. Maybe it's just that kind of Japanese way of doing things. That they don't really like doing things linearly in the yeah. same sort of way that we do over yeah. the West. Maybe maybe it's more of a cultural thing. Um, but I quite like that to be honest. Like the one thing I hate, or I've come to hate, is using like the MCU as an example. Like, I'm even yeah. annoyed at the fact that they've done uh, a Joker, like uh, not the Joker, Penguin spin-off series. I'm like, you're fucking dragging me into it all the time. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't yeah. need to. Yeah, but you do, don't you? Like because you're going to miss something, and they're yeah. going to be nods to things, and you won't yeah. know what they are. So it always winds me up that everything is becoming. In, ever more so entwined with things like apparently even in house of dragons there's nods in um game of thrones so if you go back to watch game of thrones again you'll notice things that they've yeah. done nods to in house of dragon i'm like well now i've got to watch all fucking that shit again at some point theoretically <laughs> if i want to understand what the... like so it's like a never-ending cycle of this stuff and yeah I think sometimes it annoys me with games when they do it as well because you think ah. Like, yeah, I mean, there's, it's, it's. I mean, I don't mind the Easter eggs and things like that. I think that's cool, but there's some, it, like, I don't know if you saw like Space Marine Warhammer Forty K Two has come out, mm. and it's set like many hundreds of years after the original. But I think you play the same character, and they're like, "We well, don't have to play the original." I'm like, "Well, that bloke that you're telling us to control, you kind of do, don't you? Because he's he's going to reference things." And they're like, "Ah, you don't have to." I'm like, "Well, come on, don't be." 
Yeah. Don't be silly about it. Well, if you want to do it new, just get a new character. I mean, I don't know if anyone's crying after this bloke to come back. It was fucking Space Marine. It could have been any grunt, couldn't it, in, in many ways. Maybe I'm speaking ignorantly, but things like that. I'm like, you, you had a chance to really just call it Space Marine X. Or you can call it Space Marine 2 and just say it's just the second entry into this franchise mm. it's set many years after but yeah it just uh it it is annoying that things these days seemingly you can't get away with just sitting there and watching a film and being done with it it's all there's all this extra media and other stuff to go along with it so i do appreciate games although i think they shouldn't number themselves if they're going to do that i think that I still think that's yeah, stupid I agree. yeah but the fact that they don't do that and then actually don't actually uh require you to to play the others is 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 a good thing um still keeps ronnie up at night though because the numbering you know one and two are still lurking even though all research suggests it's not needed isn't it we'll never know maybe until they remake them so let's get on to the onto the meat of things then so we've done the genesis we've done the how you got to it we've done the order um Let's just cover how and where you played it. So I, th- I think we alluded to it. Game Pass jobby, right on the yeah. on the Xbox. Definitely the least financially viable way to play it because it it took me like two and a half, nearly three months, and you could have bought it for less than that on disc. So this Game Pass malarkey, people keep telling me you always make money. I'm like, well, you won't if you play games like this on it. You're Not now off. they fucking keep booting that price well, up as no. well and there's fuck all yeah. to play. It's making it really difficult to get any value out of it, I must admit. It's like 15 That's quid a month. That's gone next year. When mine expires next year, I've been on like a thing that I'd renewed for age on like lower prices. Yeah, yeah. The day comes to me and asks for £15 directly. That's the day it goes, so... You know, that's probably going to get binned at some point because it's just not getting used up to standard. Um, no, the I good mean, thing they did actually with this one, which is very, very unlike Game Pass and unlike what you'd see in a subscription service, is actually a DLC, like an e- expansion or they call it an episode, I think it is, that came later. It's only just recently released. And that is included in Game Pass. Normally you have to pay for that. So that is one of the few times they've kind of sat there and done it. But, you know, it's... Mm. Uh, it's not a. I wouldn't recommend getting this on Game Pass if you're not going to burn for it quickly, um, because you'll you'll be on. Like, it took me 100 hours. Um, people say you can get through this in like 40 to 60 hours. That's just complete lie. If you hear that, don't. It's 80 hours minimum, I'd say. And if you're still getting through it at that pace, I don't know what you're up to. You must be just roasting through dialogue or, or whatever. I mean, I am slow to be fair, but I was going to say you you. It's always tricky with you because I think, right, how many times have we, as Ronnie, had to get comfortable with stuff? And But generally speaking, you and I are not usually that far off. And I think some games as well, I've actually taken longer than you. Yeah, so, that has happened. The thing with the Persona is you have to play the days. You can't just skip oh, there's no through. there's no choice. Yeah, that's true. Like, you have to play the days. You can't just skim through it. Like You have to go and do something other... I don't know. Like how long do beats? Like, but it's so, sixty-three hours main story. I'm like, what? Yeah, that's, that's insane. And also because it's a JRPG, like, are you, are you leveling up enough? Like, you, that's the thing mm. about these games. You, I'm always concerned about being caught pants down towards the back end where I haven't put the work in. Mm. So maybe I over leveled, but it didn't feel easy. I mean, I didn't die a great number of times, but mm. um, it wasn't like I was just one shotting everything. Like it was still tough. Still had to keep my wits about. I only had it on normal. Yeah. Maybe people. I mean, are... you're not you're not wrong though. It says all styles, eighty two hours. Like yeah. that's the, I assume what they mean by the average. So completionist ninety five hours. There's still stuff left on the table. I definitely didn't completionist it. So I don't know, I don't know what the people are up to. Maybe it is maybe you can shave 10, 15 hours off mine. But yeah, it's a lot lot of time though to shave. Like mm. yeah, I can't like imagine I said, you're spending ten to fifteen hours fannying around. Like that's just that's a reasonable size game that you've just. <laughs> added on there. <laughs> like I said, you can't really skip through things. The only thing that will slow you down is going to Tartarus more often, which is the dungeon. Like mm. that's the that's the time sink, really, because you can spend you could spend four hours in there in one run, and you're only going to tick over the day when you when you leave. So yeah, yeah. that's where the time sink is. So maybe I spent too much time in there. But again, it's a I want to get my fifteen hours. Well, probably not. Maybe that's what they're offering. 
But um, yeah, so it's a Game Pass jobby, taken over two months to get through. Um, I've kind of got some topics here. I don't know if you would prefer this or if you've got any other questions before going into it, but I've got story, characters, combat, Tartarus stroke dungeon, social life, and then quality of life improvements or thingamajigs that might help. So... Okay. You can so, start whenever of those, or you can just go off on a tangent. I don't I don't mind. You start where you want to start this time. So you've got a list of your topics. Why don't you start talking us through those, hmm. and then that might pro- provoke some additional questions as we go through it. All right. Let's start with story. Yeah. So... By the time I got through it, I was satisfied. Right. Okay. But it's definitely very, very pedestrian during like the middle section of the game. Like if you, and this is not an exact science, but if you were to split the game up into like thirds or like acts as people do, the headline is it starts strong, mm. lets you really get acclimatized to. The game, the mechanics, and is that's a bit pedestrian. But I don't mind that early on, but it does kick you in quite early and sets things up nicely. So that's mm. that's okay. But then there's just like months of like in-game time where you're just going through the motions. There's not a lot going on. There's certain events that you know are coming or are happening. You get into a flow and you're just like, what's really happening here? This is just like there's like a sag in the middle of the game. Right. And then it starts to sort of ramp up a little bit for the last third. But the middle bit really did feel like completely like slow. I was like, what is... Maybe that's why it took long. I think I spent time not really hammering it. Because I was like, you know what? I don't know what's going to progress if I sit on this for two hours. Probably not a lot. And it right. kind of slowed me down a little bit. They get there in the end. There's definitely like a middle chunk of the game where there ain't a lot going on. And it's, Do you think that's because they might be uh, expecting you to be doing some levelling up or some grinding or doing right. some t- in the middle of it? Like there might be, I don't know, I'm speculating, like they've, they've kept it sparser to allow you the time to go off and do this dungeon yeah. thingy or whatever or, or to grind a bit. I don't know, I'm speculating. Like, Do you think that's possible? It is possible. I just, I just think when they came to redo this, they clearly wanted to expand it in some way. Yeah. But the story is the story. And I don't know if they necessarily thought about how to keep the momentum. Like Persona Do you think f- they've just like dragged it out? Yeah. Basically. Like- yeah. I don't think that. Yeah. I think that's what's happened. Because like Persona 5 Royal, that's, I think that's another 30 or 40 hours on top of this I spent. So it's like in the one thirties or forties. It might be more. Yeah. But that never really felt like it was like, you know, there are slow parts, but not excessively slow. Done a really good job of keeping things ticking over. Events Mm. are happening. New information is coming to light, et cetera, et cetera. And actually the way in which that's kind of set up where you go and take on like the boss for that month or that period of time, there's like a good story entwined with it and you work your way way towards it. Mm. Whereas for a lot of Persona 3, there's just like, there's going to be an event happening. Uh, yeah, we're just going to take on this enemy and just wait until that time, get yourself ready, do your social links, and you know we'll see. And you kind of just keep doing that and doing that. And you're like, when is this going to... What's going on? And obviously, you it's get the answers, it, but... Yeah, it's, it's like, because they've told you saying it's going to happen. So you've got this like anticipation mm. that, by the sounds of it, goes on longer than you want it to. Yeah, and you'll go through that cycle a few times and there's not really a payoff at the end of each of them. Difference with Persona 4 Golden and Persona 5 Royal is every time you sort of tick Mm. off a big enemy or a big sort of segment of the game, there's some sort of payoff. Yeah. Whereas this felt like there was many months where it was just like, okay, on to the next one. It's like, oh, no no new party member, no, no sort of information coming to light about what's actually going on here just we're going to do another rotation of this and we'll see you again in you know a few weeks or so it's like <laughs> okay so it, it definitely struggles yeah. I mean, I said it gets there in the end but it feels a little bit unbalanced i don't know need how to would kick up the that. arse basically what you're saying it, it needs yeah. shivying along and it, it isn't doing the shivying 
No, yeah. It's a strange conundrum, but in games this long, there's always a risk of that, I think. They feel like they're, they are sort of pedestrian, but they kind of pulled it off with Persona 5 and Persona 4 mm. from that perspective. So the blueprint was there. Then again, this was the first one story-wise and lore-wise, like their first sort of go at this. So maybe they just sort of unbalanced what had to go into the main story and couldn't quite correct it. But it's it's perfectly fine. It's just not as uh, not as impactful as perhaps the other two. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because I think one of the things that you've always raved about is that kind of like story arc that you've enjoyed progressing i think one of, i can't remember which one you said it's sort of at times i think it might have been for golden is that one basically one of them you're like well i kept having to go into these fucking dungeons and it got a bit repetitive i think you, you felt the yeah. repetitive nature of it but generally the story's been pretty strong for you so it's interesting that that has flagged um, yeah, there's more similarities in the dungeon. We'll get to the dungeons in the dungeons between three and four, definitely. Mm. Um, they absolutely, with five, clearly made a conscious decision to make those dungeons more unique and as you go on, less repetitive. And they pulled it off. Uh, this is still suffering, unfortunately, from your dungeon crawling, blah blah. And we'll get to that. Um, but I mean, I think they're crap anyway. I, I, I don't think there's one dungeon crawler that I've played. I've been playing Diablo 4 lately, and I'm just sort of like, I still don't get this. I just don't, I don't understand what it's all, I, I don't understand what people are getting out of it. Like, <laughs> I, I do a little bit, but not to the point where people just bucket a hundred odd hours in it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just sort of like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But um, anyway, we digress. So, Okay, so topic one, story. Yeah, might as well tie the characters in because that's kind of yeah. close close by. Yeah. Um, again, this is where they, one of the strengths of Persona 4 and 5 is these characters, these people that you meet, um, how you kind of bond with them. It, it does, again, it kind of suffers from the story being slow in that your understanding of people takes a bit longer and again comes comes to life in that in that sort of last act or that last third and when i say last third i'm talking dozens of hours here because the game's so big so it's, it's not like in the last hour they go <laughs> and crap everything out yeah the uh the last third is a, is a big chunk what i'm referring to when i when i say that so don't be worrying that it's just going to crap all over you at the end it's 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 like three separate games in one if you want to look at it that way but it does suffer again that middle bit and but again it's similar to the story. They kind of get there to the end and that's one of the main draws of the game is feeling connected to those that cast of characters. Now you could argue if you're going to spend 100 hours with a certain set of characters, you, you've got no option but to connect with them. Otherwise, you would have turned it off long ago. But they are they are well written. The, uh, the, the problems they have and your learnings of them getting into their backstories is good and ties nicely in with the overall kind of story as well, which gives that some meaning and, and purpose. So yeah, they pull it off again at the end. It, it just kind of has that same suffering of the sag in the middle, um, which is unfortunate. Yeah. It's disappointing. I think when you're spending such a long time in something like that, like, they need to if you get if you're asking this time off for me, you need to make it feel worthwhile. Mm. Like and I think one of those games where you know there's probably still a lot to do and you're like, fuck me, like if this don't pick up, like this is just gonna die a death here. Yeah. So and to your point, you're saying the middle third can last probably like well, if you spend hundred odd hours on it, you know, thirty three hours, yeah. like a literal third. Um yeah. It's a fucking long time. Exactly. Like, I don't no, think it's, like, yeah, but yeah. It, it's not far off. Like, it's yeah. Like, and yeah, it's, it's just it's just slow going, and the characters kind of do suffer from that as well. But as I said, they turn it around and get there. And maybe the fact that you and this is probably going to the social side of things a little bit, sort of diverting off. But maybe because you don't. There's only a handful of your party members that you can do the full sort of social link process through, which is like where you rank mm. up with them 
and you get to level 10. That's how you find out about them and become like bonded to them. You can only do yeah. it with a handful of the party members this time, which is a carryover from three. Uh, I think in four, it's everyone and five, it's everyone. So they clearly at some points that actually people want to get to know these characters more intimately and doing the social links individually is a way of doing that. So that's not a, th- a thing here. That, that may well have... That would have cut, that would have done they would have done a good job to have had that sort of focus in the middle, I think. Um, to, to be able to speak to every character in, in that way. Now you can you can get to know them, but these are like side activities. It's not like the full ten step, you know, slow burn to, to get to know them. It's like you do three or four things with them over the course of a few weeks and they will they will reveal certain things to you or you'll get to know them better. Um, it does tr- pay off and give you perks for that character when you're in combat. So that's actually quite mm. cool. But I think everyone almost unanimously prefers it when you can do the full social link 10 rank with your party members because you just get more time from that way. And whereas here, there's only like maybe three, I think, out of the, the seven or eight that you can you can do. And you, you get to know them all, but you know, you're missing that 10-step that approach, which seemingly bonds people to them okay well another slight besmirch of uh of the game as a whole they're clearly figuring things out of this one so you right. can kind of see that from where you've because you've kind of played it in a bit of a hickledy pickledy order right wow. so you can see what's going on like there's things yeah. that they've obviously picked up in the later games that they haven't done in the earlier ones because despite them being a remake, whatever yeah. you want to call it, it's kind of tired. Like the nuts and bolts are, the, are, are still very similar. Yeah, because um, what they've had to have done was remove some of the other social links for the characters that aren't party members because there's only so many Arcana cards, I think it's 12 or 13, that are associated mm-hmm. with these links. So if they'd removed two or three of those, you know there'd have been uproar. Oh, um, you've got rid of those fuck. Oh, I can't. And it's like you, you couldn't have won. It was what it was. So they kind of had to commit to it. And they do try to get them on side with that sort of those side little quests where I don't know. You, you sit down and watch a DVD of them three or four times, and they'll start to reveal certain things about themselves. And then at the end of that sort of third entry, you'll they'll get a stat perk they might it might reduce the amount of sp they've got to use in combat and things like that so they're worthwhile doing just for the mechanical combat side of things but that's kind of your opportunity to get to know the other ones and yeah you can see that there's by giving you a handful people clearly the feedback was no we want to get to know all these people that's what's important Mm. so they they did correct that with four and five do you miss Mm. how do i phrase this do you feel like because you've played those later iterations it sours the overall experience going back whereas if you'd have played this one back in the day or whatever or before Mm. do you think it would have been as i guess noticeable if that's the right word i think i played in the right order because I think playing. Oh, crap's on me. I said no, Logan. I've <laughs> I'll done back it right. myself here Don't for once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sole reason being is if I had played it, I'm trying to think of what the optimum way of playing it would have been. Like, because if you play this, if I waited, so, so I was yeah. like, right, I'm going to wait till Persona 3 Reload comes out, then do three, then do four, then do five. Three would have been fine. I'd gone for it and been like, oh, yeah, this, this is what it is. Mm. I'd have then gone to four, which hasn't had the remake, hasn't had the quality of life improvements. It's very archaic in some ways with the onboarding. I'd have been like, what is mm. this? Like it would have been a complete and utter, yeah. I'd have been out of, out of water completely struggling. And I think I would have hated that game potentially because right. the, the amenities that this game gives you in some ways are better than five because it's come a bit later. And again, they've tweaked things and, and made things mm. better for you. <laughs> that would have been a real shock to my system. So I think... I think just playing the oldest game, as in the version of the game that was released the oldest, which was Persona 4 Golden at the time, yeah. and ignoring free, knowing there's a remake coming, kind of worked. Because it meant I got the, the hard bit of bad onboarding, lack of explanation, not really knowing how the game operates. 
sort of out the way. Then when I went to you five... You started with the shittest version. I mean, shittest is the wrong word. But yeah, the I would say version. so. Yeah, I'd say, I mean, it might be a better game overall, or better story or characters, but certainly if you just ball it down from a design and a nuts and bolts and mechanics, like it, it is, it's the, again, it's the 2008 game. So the yeah, struggles I mean, that they were putting in back then, like, oh, you know, no real checkpoint in during your dungeon crawling. You're like, what are you... What do you think you're doing? Like doing things like that. That's really not cool. Then they get to it. They rectify that here, which is yeah. his handy. There's just small things like that. You can just tell. It's like, why are you being bastards about this? There's no need. Mm. It's hard enough as it is to figure all this stuff out. So yeah, it would have just killed the game. It would have been really hard, I think. Um, right. Now I could have waited for a Persona 4 remake, which may be happening, may not. But that's further on down the line. If they do do Can it. Only, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... If you want to play something, because you started out, did you start out on five? I'm right in saying no. that you played, you went four, then five, and then back to three. That's it, yeah. Because right. it was, it wasn't when the games were originally released. It was when that version of the game was released yeah. that I thought, you know, I'm going to go with that. So, I, I just, I'd clocked they'd made so many improvements from five at least, mm. and thinking in my head they're going to make so many improvements to three that it makes sense just to backburn that and start with. The most playable old version of whatever yeah. title, even if it is four and not three, um, and that's the. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. overall, I haven't gone through that process. That's mm. what I'd recommend to people if they want to do all of them. Now, they're not connected, so in fact, you could just start with three or five now and be off to the races. Really like. so, yeah, yeah, so it's not really yeah. a problem. But old Ronald likes to test himself sometimes. He likes to make sure that he's covered all the bases. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, Okay, so what we got next, topic-wise, that we, we need to cover? We've got combat. Okay. So, turn-based. Yeah. As you'd expect. Yeah. Um, the standard sort of persona affair. Look for yeah. weaknesses, exploit them, chain together attacks, yeah. efficiently destroy the enemies as, as quickly as possible. Before they can even get a turn, That's the that's the aim. Get after right. these bastards before they can even hurt you, and then you're you're off to the races. Yeah. But um, it's really slick. Like it's really slick. So the, the I good... felt like there's a butt coming. Sorry, oh, I was, no. the, the reason I was sorry, you were going turn based. I was like, right, <laughs> yeah, obviously. And I was waiting for you to go, but like, and like, crap on it basically. But you didn't. No, no, no. This is this is really good. The the, the only thing missing from five to three is what they had called like technical hits. So there's certain ailments you can drop on an enemy, so you can confuse them with a magic spell or certain items. And what Persona 5 had was an opportunity to follow up on that with a certain right. type of um, uh, attack. So I'm making this up, but say if someone's confused, you could get an instant critical if you hit them with an ice attack. And there were like these little pairings that were there mm. throughout all the different ailments. If you enraged someone and you smacked them with your sword or hit them with slash damage it would critical them. It's like, there's always instant little small wins you get. That's not there, which I thought was a bit of a strange omission because I've really liked that. And that's something right. you kind of discover more of you play. But they add in the shift mechanic, which replaces the baton passing from five. So in five, you hit a critical, you can then bat and pass it to another person. Maybe they've got a different, you know, maybe they've got shock or electricity, which you don't have. And there's an enemy that's susceptible to that. They use mm. the shock. Then you can bat and pass it to one of the other two members that are left, and just sort of, the way to sort of work around your party and efficiently destroy them. Shift's very similar, but you can sort of go back and forth between members. So once you've used someone, they're not frozen out of the shift. So you can just shift to I don't know your set your healer. Then sh and if you hit another critical, shift back to your main protagonist, swap your persona out, hit, and it just makes the whole thing flow much better because you haven't got a give up a turn until you run out of, you know, criticals or um, or weaknesses to hit. So that really gets things going quickly. And once you've kind of learned certain enemy weaknesses, you can literally just bully them out of the, the game early on. And the bosses are a different kettle of fish. They're designed to hit hard. They don't really have weaknesses. So you've got to find other strategic ways around them. But when you're going through the dungeons or the, the standard affair, the shift mechanic's really cool. Just really just speeds things up you hit R to rb if you've already discovered a weakness weakness it will automatically select that spell or that attack 
and then select the enemy and then you can just confirm it. If you've hit someone's weakness and you press RB, it'll also show you who to shift to, who's got a weakness for another enemy. So it does all this stuff. Just to, You just hit that, bang, crash, wallop. You do have to discover the weakness first. It doesn't just mm. tell you. So that's your sort of fact-finding when you get introduced to a new enemy or a new enemy type. But once you've got it logged in, hit RB, bang, 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 and you can slam through um, the, the, the enemies quite quickly. The only bad thing about doing that is... The soundtrack that plays cuts off the chorus if you do it too quickly. So you lose out on that, which is not ideal. <laughs> and as we know, the soundtrack in Persona is incredibly uh, popular. And a lot of people like it. So you don't want to be skipping that. Yeah, just as a side, it's it's very good. So they, again, that's three games on the spin that have excellent soundtracks. I don't know if I'd rate it above four. I still think that's the best. Maybe above five? Maybe, but we're talking top tier squabbling. It's not even, like, it's, it's in the same league as those two. So, it's, yeah, um, I, I've it's watched really streams good. where people use Persona music as background noise for the streams. And I'm just like, this is mad, like crazy to me. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, we get a tick in the combat box then, basically, is what we're saying. Yeah, absolutely. And, and some of the, uh, there's this thing called Fuology, which is basically a special that you build throughout your dungeon crawling so certain characters have ways in which you can increase that quickly so there's like a healer on the team every time you heal someone it boosts that bar massively like by 50 percent other person if you hit a critical it boosts there's certain ways in which if you play them certain ways it'll boost them once you hit that you can unleash like a special attack like a powerful attack that, that ignores resistances on enemies or hits criticals and that's it's useful to build those up before you get to like a big enemy and if you've got three or four of those ready to go in the chamber you can kind of kick the first round off and really do some damage to, to bigger bosses that way so that's fun that's another little strategic element to as you're going through working out how far you are from a, a strong enemy thinking right i'll save that until mm the next floor when I think I'm going to encounter like a gatekeeper or a boss or something like that. Um, so that's, that's really good as well. It adds just a, another element to it. And as you explore the different social links or the side activities of the character, they add more options for you. The stronger that kind of bond builds throughout the game. Shuffle time is back from persona four. So at the end of a, a turn or, a, or killing an enemy, it brings up a number of cards randomly but also if you destroy them with an all-out attack which i won't go into but if you destroy them that you're guaranteed shuffle time and it goes do you want to pick this card it'll give you 50 percent health for everyone do you want to pick this card it'll give you a new persona to put in your back pocket and potentially use do you want this one it'll give you xp and it gives you those as i said randomly throughout normal battles if you destroy them with the uh, the all-out attack when everyone's down you guarantee that i had a problem in persona 5 where the only way to get other personas into your party or into your loadout was at the end when they would like they would like talk I don't know if you remember me saying this they would talk to you to have to have like a conversation with them and convince them to join yeah. and it just slowed things down because it was like this other like element it's like if they're, they're done with and if you pick the wrong option they bugger off or you lose them I preferred shuffle time from Persona 4 it's back in Persona 3 if, if a new Persona comes up that I haven't got I always pick that there's other things like major cards that you can get that sort of give you a boost throughout that whole dungeon run until you leave so it might increase your xp for everyone for the whole run um it might let you choose two cards for that run so that's really helpful um and if you get like there's normally like there's by the end there's you know 10 or so of these but in the early goings you can only pick up two then you can only pick up three if you max those out it boosts all the cards that you get after that so it's kind of a little strategic element to staying in as long as you can to take advantage of like oh i've got extra xp on this run Mm. how far do i go and do i go back and rerun a few floors to take advantage of that probably not worth it to min max it but it's nice to do (laughs) he liked that bit he really Mm. enjoyed it yeah (laughs) I, i can imagine like it being a pain to have to do all that work then have to convince someone and they will still be saying on the line like the end of it mm. like for a new persona so it's really it was really annoying now this is random mm. in that you don't know what you're going to get yeah but it's easy to get, get, get it yeah. yeah and it'll tell you if you've already got the persona because that'll just level up the persona in your um in your possession and um 
So if you want to level them up, you can do that. But normally I'll be like, okay, I'll take the, I'll take some cash or I'll take some an XP boost or or whatever. Mm. And yeah, it's it's good. And one last thing, the Navi, who is a member of your party who sort of coordinates you and helps scan the rooms and do things like that, she's got some really cool powers that she can bestow upon you as well. They are a little bit random in that she's got her own theology kind of bar that builds up and then when it does you hit it you don't know what you're going to get sometimes you'll get a refill of your stamina points sometimes you get a refill of health sometimes it'll charge your party up with attack or whatever but that's handy it comes in clutch sometimes when you're really on the back foot and you think fuck the game kind of knows i think sometimes and tries to throw you a bone but the amount of times i was on like low health and it gave me like an attack boost and i was like can you not just give us the hp that we're all struggling with here we're actually on the back foot but you know, eight, maybe seven times out of ten, you get what you need out of that. Yeah, a couple of times you think you're just getting trolled by the game. Yeah. Um, so, what else is on your little list? So we've got the dungeons or the dungeon stroke yeah. Tartarus. So Let's this do is Tartarus. Yeah. Um, this is definitely a step <laughs> down from. It's, it's yeah. definitely a step down from Persona Five. <laughs> is 100. percent Persona Five is top tier though. So in saying it's a step down, mm. doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's still pretty uninspired, though. Like, it's better than what the originals were, for sure. But it's just... I mean, there's just so many flaws. There's so many... It's very repetitive. Like, I think that was one of my problems with Persona 4 Golden, is that the dungeon areas were repetitive and that's the same here and i think there's even more flaws than overall than what persona 4 had and it's just the same thing it's just run through the level hit an enemy if you choose to engage find some treasure chests um get to the next floor rinse and repeat you'll get yeah. the the good thing is they haven't made it stupid where you've got to go 10 floors without a checkpoint you know every three or so floors there'll be a teleporter that you can use that you can take out back to the entrance save the game change your party if you want to go back in and you'll continue from the floor that which you came out from um that checkpoint is is useful because the last thing you want to do is get through like a, a 10 floor fucking grind get to the ninth floor and get put down and not have had an option to at least save on the seventh floor yeah, um, yeah. It's random. Again, it's, it's procedurally generated. I think this is the problem between that four and three share in that there's only so much the procedural generation can do. It uses mm. the same assets for the theme of that block. So it's kind of split up into blocks, this big tower. Um, but it's just a load of corridors running through. Whereas Persona 5, handmade dungeons or palaces, as they were called, with little side bits to do, puzzles to, to unlock. Um, you could there's verticality to it there was shortcuts you could it's just a different world and this is yeah, again yeah. they could have sat there and spent another two years building this out for tartarus but clearly for we're just going to chuck it in there make it better than what it was but still not still not close to persona 5 and um that's something people are just gonna have to, to deal with um they I try and make so it, you're not you're not looking to do that though when you remake a game, right? You're not looking to no, I mean, yeah to to rebuild it at that level because there are some aspects that make it. And yeah. I, I think about it, if you if you were making a game, like you would want your games to show a journey. Like even if you remade them, yeah. there's some aspects that you'd have to do from a quality of life perspective. But ultimately, the game's a game, and you still yeah. want to have that element of. Um, like the core game about it. Otherwise, you, you, what's the point? If they completely changed all that, they might as well just do a different Persona game. Like, why bother redoing that one? Yeah, exactly. They offer things like um, uh, boss retries. So when you hit like a boss, if you die, you don't have to go back to your last save. You can, but mm. you can just retry the boss. Um, sometimes it's useful just to die in the first one to find out what sort of attacks they're using. And then going back to your save just before the boss and changing your party composition because if you've got someone that's weak to electricity and this guy is just thundering electricity all the time you don't really need want that person in your squad because they're just going to yeah, be a yeah, hindrance yeah. so that that's uh that's useful because again sometimes many games will 
force you to go back to the, the save regardless. Whereas this, you can just think, if you got really close, you're like, oh shit, just hit the button, you're back in from the start and you go, right, I've learned these lessons and normally you'll slaughter them the second time around because you've kind of understood what they, they will and won't do. Um, so yeah, that's 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 nice. It sort of stops Tartarus being a complete and utter shambles and grind. I mean, it is a grind. It's a massive grind. The amount of flaws in this thing is absurd, really. And considering it's pretty uninspired, it's not great. But it's at a minimum standard now where it's it's manageable and it's not going to completely just yeah. chuck banana skins out. They try to add like these monad doors, they're called. They're random doors that appear. And you can go in there and there's a powerful enemy in there, but you get loot and rewards that are probably above what you'd normally get. So that's a nice... That's a nice thing to have. You think, I'm feeling a bit chirpy here. I think I can take that bastard down because I'm going to get a good reward on it. Uh, sometimes when you're low on health and low on SP, like no chance. This ain't, this ain't yeah, worth yeah. it. And once you leave the floor, the door locks. So you have to kind of make the decision whilst you find it and, and get to it in that, in that part. But yeah, it's, it's Tartarus. And those that have known about this know what to expect. Improved, but once you've played Persona 5 you're just like how have they even it really makes Persona 5 feel like that that the dungeons in there really are just like groundbreaking <laughs> compared yeah, to what they were doing before because it was to be honest it's low effort design you know we'll yeah. just procedurally generate hundreds of floors for you to go through with like a change in assets for block like to change the style of it and change maybe how wide the corridors are and it's like well I can see why you did that. It's a massive time save, but you've gone and done Persona 5 now, so whatever comes after that, yeah. you know, it's going to be compared to, unfortunately. It looks like an obvious shortcut, basically. Yeah. yeah. And look, you have to make... The games are long, so you, I get it. Like, I do I do get it, because you need, you need to create an, an environment that's repeatable for people that need to or want to level up. Yeah. But at the same point... You know, you sh- if you can't make it interesting, that's always going to be a, 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 a tricky proposition. But you're spending half the game probably in there, so that's a lot of work, isn't it, to delve out fifty hours worth of you know unique content for these these yeah. dungeons. But yeah, Tartarus is not for the weak weak hearted for sure. It's a uh, to pull your belt and braces up and just knuckle down and go I'm going to get through this that's what it felt like sometimes you get through this get to the next checkpoint get past the next gatekeepers and go because what the game will do is you'll hit a certain you'll hit a blocker basically whether you can't progress yeah. uh, until you sort of get past the next I guess narrative beat in the game then it'll unlock mm. um, oh one thing that really fucked me off so this 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 um this Tartarus, right? People get lost in that. Humans get can get lost in there. And you can go in and rescue them and you get rewards. The way mm. in which I played this game was as soon as there was a free evening, I would go to Tartarus and try and get to the checkpoint, knowing that I haven't got to go through that if I need to go back later. And then maybe I'd go back in a second time to just do some leveling or focus on a certain party member because they don't pick up a XP unless they're in the party at the time. And there is a little shortcut you can do like if you spend enough of these twilight fragments on chests unlocking them it will mm. randomly generate this little clock that you can go to and then level up your character to your level up your party members your character's level so like seven or eight levels you can just give them but um where was I going with that what was I talking about they were saying that really fucked you off oh the people getting lost so yeah so I'd go in <laughs> do that and then be like right I'm going back one more time during this part and that's it then you get a call saying there's people lost in Tartarus. And I was like, okay, that's my call to go in now. I'll go in, rescue those, level up. That's my two times done for this sort of period. Then a day before, like the, the next sort of beat, oh, there's someone else lost in there. And I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> just put them, just put the lost all in one go. So I know I can go in there and efficiently clean them out because they've got a time limit on them. You can't right. leave them for forever because they disappear. And I was like, I don't want to... Yeah, yeah. Like, it's easy enough to go in and get them, but it's a waste of an evening if you didn't want to go in there and you wanted to do a social link or something. Like, it it's is. A, it, it's a waste of an evening. I mean, in-game evening. Like, I know, I know. You're t- <laughs> it's, still just, it's still just funny hearing you say it. Say it yeah. Going, ah, oh, it's a waste of an evening. Yeah, Why can't you all just get lost at the same time? Exactly. I just That really annoyed me. I was like, just... just just say there's three people lost 
on this day, go in between now and whatever the deadline is and yeah. save them. I'm like, okay. But no, they kept dripping it out. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. So in the end, I'd wait, wait, wait until there's like two days left. And I'd be like, right, there can't be anyone lost now. And I'd go in and do it then. But yeah, yeah. out of the pain, I was just like, well, I don't know what you're playing out there. <laughs> a waste of an evening. <laughs> going to rescue humans is a waste of an evening. I want to be doing something else. Yeah, I do. Um, all right, so what else you got on your list? So I've got social life on there. I don't know if I actually need to. I've sort of touched on that in that the social links mm. are there, but there's only a handful for your characters. There's side activities for your characters. Um, or your, your party, I should say. Mm. I think I've kind of touched on most of that. The social links don't offer you perks like they did in Persona 5. So if you maxed out, or even if you didn't, if you got like four levels above, you'll get a little perk like your strength goes up by two or you'll unlock like this, a, a small ability or th- there was a reason to kind of m- go and max them out just outside of the story elements but for the mechanical mm. elements of when you're when you're in combat but that that's absent here um so that's a social life and then quality of life i guess i've got here a few things that are small but i noticed in the other games don't always appear and just give you just it just shows that it's a modern game in that sense that it's been rebuilt with okay people don't want to be completely fucked over or left thumb up ass wondering what to do so small things like icons change color once you've spoken to someone like at school or in the town like yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll go from white and then it'll gray out so if you're if you're one of those people that wants to speak to everyone and find out because sometimes you'll get quests or you'll get information it's just a really easy way to say i spoke to them don't need to talk they haven't got anything new to say yeah so that so we like that um, the the talkable people are shown on the map as well. So the mini map down there, you haven't got to look for a little sign or just guess whether someone's talkable. Like you can say, okay, there's a little bloke there I can go and speak to, go and, go and chat to them. Yeah. They've got a nice calendar that you can go in at any time and view like key events, like when, when there's part-time working opportunities, when there's certain holiday days or certain events that kind of, they, they populate your calendar. So you can kind of just check that and almost plan if you want to, what you're kind of going to, going to do that week. You've got a phone, like a little flip phone. Cause it's set in 2009. So it's got a little flip phone where people will message you saying I'm available today. Do you want to hang out? Or a shop will message you and say it's discount day today. If you want to buy some stuff coming today, just notifying you of what's going on. Yeah. Um, is handy because you can you can sit there and think there's a million things to do and you're like okay the shop's got a sale and I should go there and take advantage of that because if I do it in two days I'm going to chuck money down the pan and from the menu in the phone you can zip straight towards that location so you've got to run there you just press it and it goes Broop, takes you through shows a little map oh, you get on the train fast travel well, there's, no time, there's no time going is there it's not open world uh, the yeah. time only passes when you do certain events yeah, so true. you get away with it um, and there's a rewind feature. <clears throat> say you, I don't know, say you waste, you did a week and you're like, oh, I fucked that up. I wanted to do this social link, that social link. You can hit rewind. It's got like seven or eight slots where you can go back to other points earlier without having to have a save there. So it normally does it by afternoon and evening, which are the two sort of slots you get to decide mm. what you're going to do. And I have like a few for the, the days preceding. So for those that are, I don't know, perhaps those that are going for like a full max out of the social links or don't want to waste because some of them you have to to activate them. They like there's a guy that's asking you to do like a food quiz and you have to get the food quiz right before he'll unlock the social link. And if you fail it, you've got to come back another day. I didn't bother rewinding that. I was like, I don't mind about that. But people might be trying to min max the game and be like, oh no, I'll go back yeah. and just keep retrying rather than having to go, oh fuck, I didn't save until five hours ago. I've got to go back there. Now you can just rewind it to a more recent time and, and go for it. So those are some of the quality of life issues. Had I played the original, I'm sure there's a dozen or so more because like I said, it's a game from 2006 that whilst was praised, definitely had some old design and, and flaws in it. So overall, they've done a nice job of modernizing the game. It doesn't, doesn't feel old is what I'd say. It feels like a, what you'd see in a modern game. Ray tracing on the mirrors, Logan, you've got, it's got reflections in it, fully simulated reflections. So... I mean, it should be a basic. What was the game that didn't have it? Quite a few of them. (laughs) Um, The one that really annoyed me, what was it? It was on the PS4. Really good graphics as well, but didn't have reflections. Yeah. 
oh, it's really going to annoy me. Anyway, yeah. it's not relevant for this review, but yeah, it was a game that didn't have it. I think it's a basic, so it's nice that it's got that in it. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice looking. I mean, it's not a, it's not Demon Souls or, you know, mm. something realistic looking, isn't it? Like an anime style, but yeah, what yeah. it is, it's nice. Runs like butter and yeah, has some has some nice. Even the blood in Tartarus, like reflecting off the floor, is nice. That's a nice little touch. Um, so yeah, overall, good is what I'd say. Signed it off. Um, so I guess before we bring this to a close end to avoid unnecessary, well, is it an unnecessary waffle? Who knows? Might be necessary waffle, but to avoid more waffle is there anything else that we haven't mentioned that you want to call out um so we've said story good bit long yeah unbalanced Next in the sure. middle unbalanced characters in, are impacted by that as well tartarus yeah. bit repetitive music good um nice oh, quality of life good. changes yeah yeah um tick 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 it's some small, these are more just notes, I guess. Or something, mm. or something, something I would have actually liked. I was talking about the calendar. I yeah. would have liked you being able to leave your own note on the calendar and for it to remind you of something. Because there are certain things that aren't logged on the calendar. Like, you, there's this fridge in this dorm that you're staying in, and you can put an item in there, and then you go and collect it, and you get like a HP item back or an SP. You get like a nice reward if you just go and do that. But you can only do it one day every month. And you go there and it's like, oh, the fridge is full until the 15th of August. Yeah. And you're like, okay. But I've just got to remember to go back there on the 15th of August and it might be three weeks away. And when you're playing the game over multiple weeks, I might be in Tartarus for five hours or for a week. And then I've yeah. forgotten about it. I'd like the option to, have, when I saw that, to go right on the 15th market and put fill fridge up. So that when the 15th clocked over, perhaps it would come up and say, oh, you've got a personal note here. And then I'll yeah. be like, okay, because I missed a couple of those. It's small fry. But get that added. Some members aren't available to go to Tartarus on certain days. So there are sometimes events that they're doing. So I know that fucked people off of the original. But it wasn't really that much of a problem. It happens like once a month. Like it was quite low. I don't know if they've rebalanced that and made it mm. easier or less um, less intrusive. Yeah. Because, um, Fucking planning around people's diaries is a bloody I know, nightmare. I know. Uh, those Twilight fag fragments I mentioned, they're sort of... It's a finite resource and you might need two or three of them to unlock a chest, yeah? And once they're gone, they're gone. You can get them through grinding or randomly you get them for certain checkpoints. There is... I don't know what they're playing at. Given this is a finite resource, yeah, it's quite it's quite useful. I didn't run out, having said that, but I think you can. I think you can get in a state where you can't unlock some of the key chests. Anyway, when you beat like a gatekeeper, there's normally three or four of them with like good mm. shit in it. And it's like, this is this one's two Twilight Fragments, this one's three, this one's... Sometimes in the twi in, in those locked chests, like creme de la creme chests where you're expecting good loot, it would give you a costume for visual purposes only. No stat boost, no nothing. And we're talking like, oh, put a bikini on your healer. And it's like, what? why have I just spent three very valuable Twilight Fragments to get... Something I'm not going to put on and has no benefit to me in game. I'm like, what is going on? That should just be an open chest that you get. Not I spend my Twilight fragments to get. So that's that just me. like a show off bit, though, right? Of some sort, or don't, don't maybe. Know. But I might have run out of Twilight fragments, and then I can't open a chest that's got a fucking sword that would be useful because I've got this tuxedo that's popped out of here. I mean, it shouldn't be, be it shouldn't be locked behind what I would call no, the premium chest yeah. like in, in game. There's no, there is no yeah. microtransactions or anything like that, but like that's the premium sort of currency that you accrue in the game, and they're chucking. Mm. Doesn't what if it said, "Oh, this is a this is a cosmetic only." I'd be like, "All right, I won't spend it because I don't need to. I'd rather have like the new armor that's good later on down the line." But these useless fucks decided that it was a a good idea to chuck random. Fucking cosmetics in there. Well, we switched, but that sometimes happens with this setup. It just randomly disconnected and come back again. It just went, no. How weird. <laughs> We're at the end anyway. We'll power through. 
It's only for video listeners <laughs> or video watchers, I should say, anyway. We've, we've yeah. swapped places on our little TVs that we've got. Throwing it all up in the air again, as we usually do. Um, all right, well, look, let's, um, let's bring it to a close. So... I my assumption is is that we're going into the gallery and that this definitely makes it through the front door and that what have we got now? We've got the fucking bin or is it it's not a bin, is it? It's a fucking container ship on the outside of So self storage is there if it's not going in the gallery. The botchlin bin's there if the game wasn't finished. And neither of those apply in this case, so we're good to go into the gallery. Well I'll hand it over to you then to to tell us where in your gallery it goes. Persona 3 Reload goes silver. So oh. it sits there nicely. So for reference, Persona 5 Royal got a platinum. Yeah. Persona 4 Golden got a bronze, but only because of that debacle with the choice and yeah. the dialogue and whatnot. But I think that's fair. I think Persona 3 Reload plays a lot better than 4 anyway. Probably doesn't have the strength of characters and consistency but as a modern game it's it's better in that sense a good starting point actually for the series because you could play this it's a little bit shorter than royal depending on how quick you are but in some cases half the length i don't know what, again i don't know what people are playing if you can get through it in 60 hours great but you might want it this might be a good starting point for people to see what's going on yeah interesting how it's dotted around i mean i know you absolutely loved persona persona 5 royale um like many people did and it kind of makes sense um i did i did actually forget that you had a crap ton sounds bad because a bronze ain't a bad score no um, i got annoyed didn't i yeah I, I, I did slightly forget that you got annoyed with that and sort of had a mini rant about it which makes sense why it's there but obviously this is a an upgrade on that um so who knows where whatever next one is there another one on the radar or are you now waiting for that fantasio no, it'll be Fantasio next, which is made by, as I understand, like the A team. So the guys that did Persona Five Royal. I'm going to make a prediction on that. Yeah. Here, for the fans, <laughs> and now this will put pressure on you because you won't want to give it this score because I've predicted it. But I Thanks. think that you. I already think that that will be a step down from Persona Five, right? But I think it will be a step up from free so my initial gut feel is that that providing it delivers everything we're expecting it to kind of deliver will be gold could happen because it's a different setting completely yeah like it's i don't know how i'm going to jive with that like the school setting mm. is kind of what i don't know if it makes persona special i don't know that's, that's complete nonsense but there's yeah. there's definitely a room for like oh i'm used to this sort of format or this way of it working yeah, yeah, yeah. this is not it and it's sort of this medieval perhaps more adult, but yeah, I mean, it's possible. It's possible that it doesn't reach the heights of it. Um, but yeah, it's not far away. What are we, October the 11th? Mm. In the meantime, I'm going to do the DLC, I think, for Persona 3 Reload. Um, yeah. And then it's ticked off. That's controversial for reasons I'll probably get into if and when I finish, well, I will finish it and come back and report on it. Um and it'll be interesting to run through that and see. And then that's going to be a lot of JRPGs in a short space of I time. I did just but... think about that. If you're going to go and head um, into it pretty quickly after release, if not on release, like you're putting... It's a bit of a concern. It's what I, I think I did this with Spider-Man, didn't I? Where I fucking yeah. wore myself out and then I couldn't go we and play did. it for a bit. Yeah, I was like, ah. <laughs> oh. God, <laughs> that yeah, second one weren't up to snuff, though. I don't think. Well, I think regardless of the burnout factor, that wasn't. I felt like it didn't hit the heights of the. No, I. I but the, this is the thing; it just throws it into doubt. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. after just going, I was really hyped for it, and it didn't hit the heights. You go, was it just because I was already half burnt out from doing thirty hours or whatever, forty yeah. hours of? Of spider-man before and in a lot of ways it is going to be rinse and repeat with some changes so yeah. um yeah i don't i don't know i mean obviously this, this is quite different to that and there's there's a lot more to it but um it is a risk just from from the brain's perspective but there's some games you just don't get worn out from right i yeah. think that's also a distinction to make i mean i could pick up rocket league every day or whatever i don't yeah. i don't particularly get 
like worn out. I get worn out in sessions, but I don't. I don't sit there going, "Cool, I need a break from that." Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those. I did do Persona Four Golden and Persona Five basically back to back as well. Mm. So that has been done. This will be a similar yeah. effort. So yeah. it's it's doable. I think it's important to have something else to play that isn't yes. as taxing. That's why Astro Bot's been really helpful because even if it's just at the end of a session with Persona 3 Reload, I'll just do one level on Astro Bot, cleanse the palette. palette. It might be half hour or less than that. Yeah. Maybe I'll do two yeah. levels or whatever and then come off it. So it's kind of giving that game some more life So I'm not just burning through the game, which you could do. Mm. And it's such an easy pick up and play that... You know, if I, if I don't pick it up for three, four days, I'm not going to forget the story or yeah, you know, yeah. I'm rusty on the mechanics. It's not like mm. Mario is a bit different in that you kind of learn all the different long jumping and the cappy stuff. Like you kind of need to, you actually need a level of, I Muscle think. Muscle memory. Yeah. Whereas mm. Astro Bot, I don't think you necessarily need that because um, mm. each level kind of has its own different theme, which is a strength and a weakness in itself. But that's helpful as well. I think I've learned this whole, you have to have one game only it's good. Like if I'm playing The Last of Us Part Three, there's no need to have anything else on. But for big long games that take multiple months, it's handy just to have something to dip into on the rig that's low, low stress and just a complete different. Like I don't want any story. I don't want to be dealing with any. I don't want to deal with more heartache. So something like no, Astro you Bot, just want have that. something easy or something multiplayer social, games are good for that. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Helldivers, if that was still kicking off again, that would have been a useful. Yeah. Which I think I did when I was playing Rebirth. I think that was yeah. going on at yeah, the same time. So again, that was useful. Yeah. So just having, I've kind of got to the stage where yes, ideally you have one game on the go, but sometimes you just need something little to to keep mm. you fresh. So we'll see if we can find another one of those if and when I get through Astro Bot. Yeah, sounds good. Good. Well, that's it. Persona 3 Reload in the books earns itself a silver, gets into the DIMP digital gaming gallery. We've done a lot of waffle on this game, on this series in general. And uh, I guess we'll see where it takes us for future entries. But nothing more for us to say other than thanks for your time and ta-da. This was a Dimp Digital production.